Benjamin Barron. Sam Barron. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. We are in a very nice studio that I have set up. I've spent thousands of dollars on this studio. I can tell the production quality is out of this world. It's incredible. Absolutely. Actually, the yeah. lighting and the atmosphere, yeah. it's, it's superb. Mm -hmm. um, we have in front of us a chessboard. We do. And, um, you know, I consider doing a top-down view, but I don't, we don't get very many listeners like at all. So the amount of listeners who would care for a top-down view of the chess game. Very small amount. Uh, like zero is okay. the amount. Gotcha. So pretty small. Sounds good. Um, so we're going to play chess. I like it. I like chess. But usually people are quiet during chess. So uh -huh. it's going to be, we're going to play a really crappy game of chess. Yeah. I'll still destroy you. Exactly. So right. much better at chess than you are. Go ahead. All right, cool. So, um, what's your uh, first impressions of this show? First impressions of the show, um, I haven't watched any episodes yet. Uh huh. So, you know, <laughs> but I've seen your clips on YouTube. Um, uh -huh. Went and watched those. They're pretty funny. Um, I liked the one with Mary just freaking out. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh huh. You know. Um, wait, which one's that? Where Mary's she's playing, out. she's playing Gorn. Oh uh, yeah, she just doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I really like those clips. I think, I think they're very, very high quality. Yeah. Um, and it, it's only, it's exclusively because of Premiere's auto, um, auto generating captions. I would not be able to create those things if I did not have that. It helps out a lot. I've been doing shorts for Greg and Jennifer's Adventures in Imperfect Living. Greg and Jennifer Willits from the Adventures in Perfect Living? Yes, that Greg and Jennifer Willits. Friends of Mac and Catherine Barron from Catholic in a Small Town. What? I actually had them both on the show, if you didn't the know. The parents of producer Ben from Honest to God. What? Yeah. Um, but I I use the, the auto-captioning to scrub through really, really quickly and find clips mm. that are fun. So I'll watch the video basically 2x speed while reading the subtitles. Ah, because you can read faster than you can listen. Yeah, and so I can comprehend a lot more and pick out clips. So I get through like an hour show in like 45 minutes. Groovy. Yeah. I'm attacking your pawn. I can see that. Whoa. Um, do you have any regrets as far as life decisions? <laughs> regrets as far as life decisions. That's what I said. Uh, I mean, everybody's got Check. regrets as far as life decisions. Not many. And not many that, like, I, uh, not many that I don't think haven't formed me as a person. Mm -hmm. Like, mistakes are just kind of a part of life. Mm -hmm. So, whether or not you make them, does it make you a good or bad person? Mm. It's depending on if you double down on those decisions or if you see them as bad decisions and course correct. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So made some terrible decisions in my mm -hmm. life. I mean, I wouldn't say terrible. I haven't killed anybody. <laughs> um, no, I'm bad at it too. But, you know, I've always made me a better person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I saw a Hot Ones interview today with um puss in boots <laughs> what <laughs> like there was a puss in boots <laughs> um there was a puss in boots video or like the character yeah like the character puss in boots um yeah. like animated in the hot one studio <laughs> and it was like only like a four minute interview but uh -huh. you could tell it was like a marketing marketing thing mm -hmm. but it was still incredibly entertaining because the animation it wasn't like a crappy like Sean was interacting with Puss, and uh -huh. like Puss was like eating real hot wings and like drinking real milk. It was, it was impressive, honestly. Nice. Yeah. Um, have you seen the trailer for Cocaine Bear? I have not, but I know the story of Cocaine Bear very well. Um, I it looks not good. Like it just looks stupid. It's like you know when you go see a Godzilla movie mm -hmm. and. There's all these humans, and you're like, I don't care about the humans. I care about the Godzilla. Show right. me Godzilla. Too many humans, not enough but cocaine like, bear. Exactly. Yeah. And and it's like there's a bear, and he's on cocaine. How do you make that into a two-hour movie where it's not just the bear eating people the whole time? Right. Yep. Um, you're a big tech person. I am a big tech person. How did that start? Uh, honestly. Anything. How did it start? I think it just started out of like an inherent fascination with video games. Mm. Like I just video loved, games. loved video games as a kid. Uh -huh. Like 
you know, played Legend of Zelda growing up. Um, not really knowing what I was doing, but then seeing that I could do more with these video games, like when, like I could mod Minecraft, or uh -huh. I could, you know, figure out more th things. So I went down like a YouTube rabbit hole, of Minecraft YouTubers, <laughs> and that kind of naturally led into tech YouTubers, honestly. Uh -huh. And so, you know, watching MKBHD and Linus Tech Tips, and um, and that kind of stuff. And then I started not intentionally picking up knowledge and just basic information about tech to the point where I was just the most knowledgeable person that I knew mm -hmm. when it came to tech. Um, and that's just kind of how it started. And this is where we're at now. Where you are the producer on Honest to God. I am the producer on Honest to God. A young adult talk show, actually. Um, why don't you promote that? Promote that? Honest to God is a young adult talk show where we try to speak about and talk about topics on the hearts and minds of young adults to try to better them as people. The host, John Henry Spann, my old youth minister, our old youth old minister, youth minister yes. now my very good friend, and I, producer Ben, bring on three to four guests every week to discuss a topic that even some of them are user-suggested. So go over to youtube.com forward slash honest to God. To Hashtag honest to God. Hashtag at... No, no, no. Oh, yeah. At, not at, hashtag. Honestly, uh -huh. Is the at in the YouTube? It is in the URL. That's dumb. Yeah. I don't like that. But it's. I like was it. listening to a Khaled Samira podcast, um, Creator Support, uh -huh. where they were talking. Whose turn is it? Yours. Oh, uh, where they were talking about. Um, oh, what's it called? Where they were talking about the hashtags with some product designers at YouTube. Mm. And they were talking about how they probably have like more plans. For shorts in the future, or for um, ats in the future, like, like what? <laughs> like having it so you can at people in comments, mm. and it'll link to their channel. Uh -huh. And like already, if you like look in the description where people have linked to other channels, instead of doing the whole URL, the, instead of looking at the URL, it's actually like a an image mm. of their channel, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Nice. Um, stuff like that, and I think they're also they're trying to like to put in a lot more um, usability with shorts, like making it so you can, so creators can reply to comments with shorts. Oh, they do that on TikTok already. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. Um, because everything's stealing from everyone else. Right, so. yeah, so why have any originality? Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Do you prefer, have you used Instagram Reels? I have not. I haven't been on the Instagram app in a long time. <laughs> um, so on Instagram, mm -hmm. it really frustrates me because you can't pause a, a reel. Mm. You just mute it. When you tap it, it oh, just that's mutes annoying. it. Yeah. But on, on TikTok and on YouTube, um, on YouTube it, it pauses it. Mm. And like what – is it because they, they like care about – like it constantly going, does that entice people more to watch it? Like keep watching it? Or I have no idea. I th it may just be like a creative choice, I guess. It's a stupid creative it choice. Because all other ones are just tap to pause, right? Uh -huh. That's how TikTok works, right? Yep. Yeah. So interesting. Weird. Word. Um, how... How, what year was it when you first started watching MKBHD? Um, it was probably like 2013, 2012. Dang. I remember him talking about Google Glass. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Um, and I think one of the first MKBHD videos I remember watching was on the One Plus Two, mm. back when that was a thing. Um, it was a good phone. The one plus two. I'm on Three. ironic one. It was the second phone. <laughs> Isn't didn't he just release the eleven pro yeah, review? The, the one that's 11. crazy. It is. Like I, I think I remember thinking when the iPhone five came out or something like that, where I was like, I can't wait till it's like thirteen or iPhone fifteen. Mm -hmm. Like that's ridiculous that that we're already there gosh darn it sam i thought you were gonna fall right into my trap i i i'm i'm too i'm too smart 
I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. You amateur. <laughs> amateur. And a, amateur. How do you think we're all? Ben's my brother. If y'all didn't know, um, y'all, y'all. Uh, how do you think our parents doing the podcast has affected us? Oh, substantially. I don't think I would be as like um, have the the editing knowledge and skills that I do without said podcast. Mm. Oh, because you started editing it. Yeah, when I was fourteen. How did it get to the point where? Dad doesn't even know how to edit the show. Um, because he did it one way uh -huh. for the longest time. Because for a while, what they did was they just had they had a program on the Mac that would do all their bumpers for them, mm -hmm. and so they just recorded the episode, and the bumpers would get recorded in with the audio file, and then they just post that. So there wasn't any editing to it. Mm -hmm. Um. And then eventually it became um, brain fart. Eventually, like, dad found audition and found that he could make it a little easier. And so he just showed me, okay, this is how we want you to do it. And it's super simple. It's just the easiest <laughs> form of how to do it. This is all you have to do. And I think it was because I, I was using Windows Movie Maker at the time uh -huh. and all my videos. And I was asking mom and dad, wow. can we get Premiere? Uh -huh. Premiere was cost $50 a month. So they're like, ah, oh, we can't. I mean, we can't do that. And then they, like, you know, eventually bought mm -hmm. Premiere or bought the Creative Cloud so that we could use Audition for the podcast. And then I started learning how to use Premiere more and After Effects and Audition more mm -hmm. until I got the podcast. Like, I added little tweaks and, like, started using multiple tracks mm -hmm. uh -huh. instead of just putting everything <laughs> on one or two. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and so just kind of took it past what mom and dad or what dad had been doing with it. And then I, I think a lot of it is just dad not remembering mm. um, and just being so out of touch uh -huh. with Premiere and the with times. editing in general. Yeah. Because he hasn't used an editing software since Windows Movie Maker. Really? Or he used iMovie. Since, since, yeah. since iMovie. Yeah. yeah. Since iMovie. Because that's what I use. I made my videos on before Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> uh -huh. I went from I did too. I went from iMovie to Windows Movie Maker. No, I went straight from iMovie to Premiere. Cause you did the jumping for me. Yeah. I think it like having three boys, having me and then you and then Jude, mm -hmm. or you and then me and then Jude, like the the learning time gets cut in half every time. So yeah. like you spent the most time learning <laughs> all this crap. And then I like I wanted to start doing it. So then I, all I had to do is go, hey, Ben. And then you would come and show me. And then you got it. <laughs> and then I would and then Jude came along mm -hmm. and He's like, hey, Sam, teach me how to do this thing. And I'm like, why don't you just ask Ben? And he's like, because Ben doesn't want to tell me how to do it. And I like... My time's too valuable for that. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be too busy working a jackhammer. <laughs> That's from Epic Rap Battle of Manliness by oh. Rhett and Link. Um, you should have known that. I didn't. I think I have more inside jokes with Jude than I do you. That's disappointing. So. What, what was the turning point? Was it Chicago... I think it was where you became an adult and left and it was just me and Jude. And so we had well, to... Jude, like in that time when I was in Chicago, like actually got fun to hang out with. Mm. Like he, he went yeah. from being like kind of annoying, but like, you know, kind of starting to get there to like, you can actually have a conversation <laughs> with him without uh -huh. him like farting. Um, <laughs> I think that was the, that was the, the turning point there. Yeah, what was Chicago like? Like as depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I was alone. I was by myself for months. But you had roommates, and you're a very social person. I had housemates, and they were all very secluded, and I just became very secluded in my own head for most of the time. Did you think it was going to be like New Girl? No. <laughs> um, I thought I'd be working a lot more. I only worked three days a week. Oh, yeah. Um, you should have started climbing then. And I wanted to, but I didn't know how to get into it. Like, I didn't know the culture mm -hmm. of it. 
And then I got back and realized that the culture is actually really, really cool. Why? What do you like about climbing? It is a very welcoming culture, just mm -hmm. in general, and it's it it's very dexterous, in that it has you have to have complete um, control over how you're shifting your body weight mm -hmm. and where things are going, and to be able to get to that point, you have to build up finger and forearm strength mm. like significantly, as well as like ankle strength, because you have to be able to hold your entire body just by doing this with your foot, like pulling your foot back on a hold, uh -huh. so that you're it's what's called a toe hook, and so you're holding your entire body up with that and maybe one other hand as you're swinging your entire body weight up to another hold. That sounds. I, I, it's so weird to me to think like that you would ever be able to have that strength in your fingers. Like I tried it like, and I, I it's go tough. to the gym and like five days a week mm -hmm. and, and I still can't imagine like, how do you think, how do, how are your fingers not jacked? Right. <laughs> like, how, like your fingers how, don't change shape like yes. your biceps. Do. So it's, it's like cardio. Although it's like your forearms oh, especially, yeah. like my forearms are massive. Well, they're not massive. In terms they're of forearms. they're just like dense. They're just muscle. Like if you just if you touch it, it's it's just muscle. Yeah, at this yeah, point. yeah. It's, but they're they're sleek. They're lean. It's a lean forearm. Mm -hmm. Everybody that climbs is lean. Mm -hmm. Everyone that climbs, you never see jacked climbers. <laughs> like that's just not a thing. Because you can't. Because you can't. You have to have full like mobility with your with your joints, and you can't have big fat muscles getting in the way. <laughs> so it's lean. I think it's it's a part of. Um, gym culture mm -hmm. like most or not gym climbing culture like most of the people who are climbing just gave up on the gym and and they're like oh i can come well, to this place well, and just mo most break people, my hands most people have both a normal gym membership and a climbing gym membership mm. because like when i'm at the normal gym i'm just training parts of my body that make me better at climbing mm -hmm. like i'm doing back exercises mostly because your back gets ripped climbing like uh -huh. that's the biggest thing is that you're constantly using muscles in your back um sorry you did a move and so my brain like yeah, yeah my it brain like stopped. Sw it stopped and switched okay wait yes now <laughs> i forgot about oh, forgot we were doing this um but it, it engages your back in such a different way and like it is one of the most like like i'm not gay <laughs> but I love watching men climb because of how the back muscles contract and move. Especially, like, I love watching shirtless men climb rock walls. Uh -huh. It's a lot of fun. Uh -huh. um, not necessarily women because they don't have the back muscles. Because they're ugly. <laughs> um that's what I've noticed at the gym because there, there's something that switches when you go to the gym consistently for like two months is that you you start despising leg day mm -hmm. and you start like only like if you're ever at single and you're at the gym instead of you stop looking at girls at the gym and start <laughs> looking, looking at guys, guys at the gym <laughs> like it's just it's not oh she's pretty oh blah 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 blah. it's oh that dude's jacked i wonder i wonder what his set is like mm -hmm. it's 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 such a weird transition interesting now phew. Didn't see that one coming. Um, yeah, no, totally. I think. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I'm going to soon buy a hangboard, which is like a pull-up bar, but for climbing. Oh, with the with all the grips on yeah, it. Yeah, with all the different grips on it. So all the levels of like you're using your entire like a. Um, why can't I think like a jug mm -hmm. versus like a crimp versus a pinch. Like those are all very different muscles mm -hmm. that you're using in your hand. Like I'm great at jugs because it's just cupping your hand on something and holding yourself up. Mm -hmm. But I'm terrible at pinches, which is like, which is basically both sides are flat, oh. but almost sloping down and sloping Ooh. up a little bit. So you can't crimp it or your hands are going to slide off. So you have to pinch it. Uh -huh. So you have to apply both upward and downward pressure on it to be able to pull yourself up. And then of course, crimps, which can be as small as just like the very tips of your finger, mm -hmm. which just having the ability to lift your entire weight, do a pull-up with just the tips of your finger <laughs> uh -huh. is nuts. Have you thought about doing like calisthenics? I, I love the concept of that. I where do, you, yeah. I, where I, you can like hold yourself I, at any angle. There's one video 
I remember seeing where this dude's on a hangboard and he's doing one finger crimps, mm -hmm. um, which is crimps, but one finger. <laughs> So like he's holding uh -huh. himself up at this. So he he pulls himself up until his like this part of his body is level with this, and then he's flattening out his body. Uh -huh. So he's basically laying flat against like like this. Mm -hmm. Like he's holding himself up like this and like planking in the air. It's insane. It's uh -huh. nuts. Um, I'll never be there. <laughs> like I've not with that attitude. I've only been climbing for for a little over a year now. Is how long I've been climbing. But in all that time, I haven't gotten past like V2s really. Like I'm still a V2 climber, which if you don't know climbing grades, it goes from VB, V0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The highest is a V17. Mm -hmm. um, I'm V2 still. And I've been stuck at V2 for about six, seven months now. Dang. And I'm, I'm slowly getting out of it. I'm, I'm, I'm able to do a couple V3 climbs. Uh -huh. And every now and again, like a like a, a three minus, I can do a three minus, which is just just on the lower end of threes. Mm -hmm. um, or like a two plus, which is highest end of twos. I can basically do... Let me go check. Keep talking. Um, I can basically do all of the... All of the V2s. Is yours still on? Yeah. Or the light? Oh, okay. I just couldn't see the lights from here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I can do all the V2s, but not really any V3s. Which is annoying. I am not going to have a job next week. Um, I'm leaving on Monday. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I want to get a climbing climbing membership membership cool. and go because nice. i'm not going to start at my next job until i get back from founders and you're going to be climbing a lot at in wyoming i don't want to though everybody climbs <laughs> everybody climbs in wyoming and they're really good at it too of course they are they said they all outdoor climb um, i hate outdoor climbing which is intense uh-huh um and you got to come to boat rock with me and henry one time boat rock yeah it's an outdoor bouldering Oh, place. is it's, that the place they did Stranger Things? Yeah, it's where they filmed um, Skull. Skull. Skull Rock. Skull Rock, which isn't actually a skull. It's just, They cgi it's, the skull? It's just a big rock. <laughs> and so you'll have people coming and taking pictures with just a rock. It's, it doesn't look cool. It doesn't look memorable. It's just a rock. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so it's really annoying. They have to put a... They, they put a, a lock on the on the gate to boat mm -hmm. rock and you only you can only get the lock if you're on this very specific climbing like website mm -hmm. and they post it on there that's cool if if you were scrolling through youtube shorts and you saw a clip from a podcast yeah what would be a topic that you would be like oh i'm gonna keep watching through this minute long short any topic i'm not really familiar with really like if i don't really know what they're talking about <laughs> i love it uh-huh super interested um there aren't many like if i if the dogs are just there they're time, coming hey buddy. um there aren't many podcast shorts that i won't watch i mm. think like i watch pretty much everything <laughs> um because i don't scroll through youtube shorts you don't oh you just look at them on the on the recommended yeah i just i I, I just click on the, the um, what is it called? The shelf. Uh -huh. I just click on the one of the shelf things. And then when I'm done watching it, I go back to the <laughs> shelf and then click another shelf shelf video. I guess that's better. Cause Very then rarely do I swipe. You doom scroll. You, you don't doom scroll. I don't doom scroll. But I, then I end up doom scrolling because there are multiple shelves. Uh -huh. So I just swipe to the next <laughs> shelf and then keep watching. Or I'm like, okay, I'm going to get to the end of this shelf and then I'm done. Uh -huh. So I'll set like a, a limit there for myself. One of the one of the criteria I've had so far for being on the show is that you have to be older than me to, okay. to be on it because older people generally have more knowledge mm -hmm. um, than than younger people. Yeah. But I have this friend named James. Okay. And he's really smart about the YouTube algorithm. Like he will go on and on and oh. on about like he wrote a paper about the YouTube algorithm. And so I really want to to just get him on the podcast just to talk just to about, talk it, about it because he'd, he'd be so interesting so i might break the rule just for him <laughs> you should have olivia on 
Well, that should be interesting. Honestly, I'd have anyone on right now. <laughs> anyone that would want, want like, to be on? The reason, like, y- y'all don't understand because this came out on the, the day it was supposed to, but I was so close to not having an episode this week. Like, And then I told Sam, oh, you should, t- you should get Annie on. Annie would love to be on. And then Annie was on. He says, and I'm standing there. I'm standing there. And Sam goes, um, well, I guess I'm not going to film an episode this week. And I'm going, <laughs> Cause, cause it's. Ah, uh, I mean, I guess. I guess I. It makes sense because you have a lot of avenues that you do. Like you, you're not just an IT guy at uh, at, Linear Technical, at College. Linear Technical College. You're also the ho- the producer on Honest to God, and you do tech stuff. And you're like, and I'm the CEO of Red Baron Media <laughs> LLC. Yeah, 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 I can I can put that in the show Shout notes. Shout out too. to RedBaronMedia.com. If you ever need some um, That's some Baron with two R's. Yeah, hey, if you ever need some um, any kind of video work. Literally anything. I'll do it. Not porn, though. <laughs> I, don't I was about do to ask. <laughs> I won't film your porn for you. I get asked constantly. <laughs> no, I do photography, videography, web design, logo design, um, sound mixing, studio, like, modeling. Like, if you just want to film in a studio i'll spec out a studio for you he'll model in the studio he'll be like look at me i'm sitting in this chair i'll take off my shirt and then make (laughs) you pay me to put it back on (laughs) because trust me you do not want to see that Uh uh-uh nope except for the back except for the back which is ripped (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. go be gone (laughs) testing go no sam he can't he doesn't know how to get to the tripod (laughs) (laughs) Word. Word. Um, it's my move. Yep. This is a really difficult game. These mics are pretty great, aren't they? They are just wonderful. Courtesy of Red Baron Media. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure about the quality yet. I'll have to check it out. As far but... as I can tell, they sound great. I filmed Roman Catholic yesterday. With oh, them. nice. Um, so I had like, the handheld microphone. And then I had one attached to me, but I never ended up using it. Because mm-hmm. I was too preoccupied with making sure Tessa looked good. Um yeah we had this one dude oh this was great we had this one dude on um on roman catholic where his he he came up to us um like he came up to us while we were filming and i'm looking at the board think he came to us while we were filming an interview with someone else uh-huh and we had another guy with us he was like are you guys filming an interview He's like, yeah can I be on it? I was like, yeah. Uh-huh. And so he, when it was his turn, he walked up, you know, introducing ourselves before we film. And then Tessa notices that he has a sacred heart tattoo <gasps> on his forearm. Uh-huh. And so, you know, that's, it could just be seen as a cool tattoo because we're just at KSU. I mean, we're not at like a Catholic place. Uh huh. So there's not Catholics around constantly. And so like Alan, the other guy that's with us, he's saying how like he's internally like, secretly judging him for having a sacred heart and like he probably doesn't know what that means does he uh-huh um he probably doesn't know what that means and so tessa asked do you know what that is on your arm he's like oh yeah it's a sacred heart <gasps> he's like whoa are you are you catholic he's like yeah you want to see this <laughs> and so he pulls up his shirt and he shows like this huge saint mark saint saint Michael, Saint Michael the Archangel, like the statue we have downstairs, uh-huh. that just on his like chest, on, on his chest, and then he has another Sacred Heart up here, on his heart, on his heart. Whoa, it's crazy. <laughs> and so Saint Michael is his patron saint, and then he just he gave like the best answers. We were talking about dating apps in uh-huh. Lent. Chester didn't go. <laughs> I was even thinking about it. <laughs> um, it was fantastic. His name's Juan. Juan. Juan, with a J. <laughs> yeah, of course. Juan with the J. Juan. Do you know fun fact about Mexicans? Tread lightly. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. There you go. Um <laughs> <laughs> Um uh, if we have to finish this match before you leave. Yes. What's um what's the coolest piece of technology you've ever had your hands on? Uh, that would have to be a, it's your go. um, a red Gemini camera. Mm. And when I was at spirit juice in Chicago, um, for those of you that do not know, I 
had an internship in at Spirit Juice Studios, which is a Catholic film studio set in Chicago, um, or based out of Chicago. And I was an intern for three months and worked for them for two. But while I was there, I got to do what's called a passion project, um, which basically consists of you write a script and you come up with this video that you're just really passionate about that you really want to make. And then Spirit Juice gives you basically full reign with equipment and if you want to hire actors to just make this thing. Mm -hmm. And so mine was a silent short film um, called The Date. What? Um, where... <laughs> it's dust. Where during it, I got to use two Red Gemini cameras to Dang. film it, which are 5K cameras. So they just look gorgeous. And they're just beautiful sensors entirely. Uh -huh. Like they're one inch full frame sensors, which, if you don't know camera terms, that uh -huh. just means it looks big. Real good. Big good. Big good. Um, beautiful, beautiful cameras. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I have no plan here. Well, that's what you get for being on a podcast while you're playing chess. <laughs> this is your idea. <sighs> um, did it? Did you export it in 5K? Like, did you upload it? I, I uploaded it in 4K. Just, ah. just nobody <laughs> nobody you, 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 natively you watches dis, in 5K. Dis, dis, YouTube cannot, cannot distinguish between 4 and 5K. Mm. Um, but I did export a what's called a ProRes version and a 4k version mm -hmm. ProRes basically like exports in the utterly highest quality you can so that four or five minute short film became 18 gigabytes dang <laughs> one file uh -huh. and like the normal ones only like three or four still 18 oh. gigs yeah for one what's the wi-fi speeds at spirit juice oh like stupid fast gigabit so 1,000 megabytes down, 1,000 uh -huh. megabytes up. You know, I was at work today, and mm -hmm. um, this guy came to fix um, one of our printers. Mm -hmm. And he, like, I asked him, like, how would you get this job? And he told me about it. And he was, like, he, how he broke down some of these machines. Like, he knows how to take Check. them apart and put them back together. Um, and then he... And then I was like, just throw a 3090 in there just in case. And he, he laughed at that. And he was like, oh, this man understands. He <laughs> understands the computer. Um, and so he um, he got super technical with me. He was like, I got a water cooled 20, 2070 back at home. And then like, I know what half of this means. <laughs> yeah. He was like, do you know the, the new Intel GPUs are like super fast? And then blah, blah, blah. And I was like, mm. I prefer the ARM architecture. <laughs> personally in the in the apple m2 max ah uh, i have you heard about this okay so apple put their m2 max in an imac m2 chips m2 max is a chip oh the so m2 the, max not the m2 mac so it's plural so it's the m2 mac max mac <laughs> <laughs> imac a I macbook mac m2, m2 max uh, no, there's not there's not a iMac yet. So you have the the MacBook Pro with an i with an M2 Mac, Mac Max with an M2 <laughs> Max. It's just the most convoluted uh -huh. naming scheme known to man. They have awful cooling. Like I mean not as bad as you'd think, especially in the new ones. Like they're stupid good. It's it is incredible how good the M2 and M1 Max are. Mm. Especially the M2 Max Max. <laughs> <laughs> Only the M2 Mac Max are the Max one. Max Max Max. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. M M A C S and M A K S X. M A X S. Yes. M2 Max is Max. Okay, we're we've gone way too much into. So uh, so you topic. don't have an iPhone. Why is that? Because I don't like how Apple does notifications. That is literally the only reason. <laughs> that is that is the sole reason at this point. Why don't I, you just get an I iPhone and then jailbreak I it? I prefer then... the hardware. Uh -huh. And I even like a lot of what they do with software. But, okay. For serious, a lot of it is notifications and how notifications are handled. I don't even like how most how a lot of Android phones handle notifications. I think it's dumb. Are we going by the rule where when you touch upon you have a PC no. you have to... Okay. Um, there's not enough brain function Go, to dedicate to the game to do it that uh -huh. way. But 
a lot of my frustration was with, with Apple is their insistence on simplicity, mm -hmm. and so and and it's that simplicity that like that turns into complexity almost. Mm -hmm. Like there's too much simplicity. Interesting. What? How do you do that? <laughs> By moving the queen, <laughs> picking up your piece, and replacing it with my queen. Interesting. On chess.com, it would be a big blunder right here. A blunder? Yeah, a blunder by you. Uh, chess.com is, it's surprising how huge chess.com is right now. Straight up, don't I know it? <laughs> I played that for a little bit, but I, I like tactile chess. Like I, I, I prefer tactile chess as well. Yes, it's... um not very it's not the same man i i played sudoku mm -hmm. i i do that occasionally i have it on my phone and then i got really good and then i stopped playing for a while and then i got awful mm. and then i i played real sudoku in class one time i was like i'm gonna be bored mm -hmm. so i'm just gonna go ahead and print out sudoku um and then i i tried it and it was just it was just not the same because cause when I do it, it'll, like, fill out. Uh, I don't know. but Like, the paper was not as good as... As the app. As the app. Because the app makes me Check. understand things. Mm. How could you do this to me? <laughs> um... Yeah. I mean, we but we have basically the same pieces. It's just you outsmarted me and took my queen because I was playing too much offense, not enough defense. Mm -hmm. Check. I thought you were stupid there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no. What were we talking about before? Before. Apple. Apple. Simplicity. Simplicity. Oh yeah. Um, it's it's the ecosystem, man. It draws it you in. Really and I, does. I hate everything except for the iPhone. Uh -huh. Like I like the iPhone. I like the UI and stuff. I really like the Apple Watch. I really like Macs for the most part. I don't like their file manager. I think their file manager is dumb. Check. Um, yeah, I don't want the file manager inside of Mac. Check. <sighs> you know what? Uh, oh, come on. No. Come on. Let no, me I'm done. Okay. Fine. Good game. Good game. Um, yeah, I, 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 I like most everything about it. I even, I'm, I'm even a fan of, have you seen the new HomePod? Yes. Sam, I think it's, I, 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 I think, think it's, it's hot, time, time to, to pray, pray the Angelus. Angelus. <laughs> Our, um, Stop. Hey, it's gonna start up again. Is it? No. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's that's the worst part about about Apple is like there it, it it it's almost too much simplicity mm -hmm. to the point where you can't do anything. Like when when I was when I was working in Chicago, I they had. Um, they had Macs as all, all the computers. Oh, that's annoying. Um, just because I guess Rob, the the CEO, just loves Macs mm -hmm. and loves Apple, even though he has like Google Homes on his desk. So he like crosses crosses ecosystems. Mm -hmm. But and there's a lot of there's a lot of things about how Apple works that make a lot of sense. And for like for users that aren't very tech savvy, and I think that's. That's what Apple was kind of meant to be in the first place, mm -hmm. was it was for people that didn't really know tech. Mm -hmm. And it's still kind of for that. That's what the iPhone is kind of built for. But as more and more people, and as they start to make pro phones, the iPhone doesn't feel like it, it looks like, and it feels in the hand like a professional thing. Mm -hmm. But then when you start using the software, it's very much not professional. Mm -hmm. Like you can tell they're trying to make professional things. They're still easy for everyday people to use, which is not the way to do it. Yeah, you're if like you're gonna, fighting between two exactly, extremes. If you're going to give professionals the tools, just give it to them. Mm -hmm. Don't try to constrain them and make them use it in a specific way. Like on Windows, there's a thousand different ways to 
to do every single thing you want to do. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you can change those ways. Uh -huh. If you don't like it, you can come up with a new way to do it. Like whenever I get a new Windows computer, like I hate stock Windows. I'm not a fan. Mm -hmm. I like as soon as I get a, my Windows 11 PC a couple months ago, I immediately stripped it down to its bare bones and built it back up with like start all back and custom icon packs and wallpaper engine and just little touches that change the UI to fit my style. Because mm. Windows is kind of going the same way where they're trying to simplify things as much as possible. Mm -hmm. anyway, and that's my gripes with technology. Like it, it frustrates me a little bit because this is happening with, I'm really into 3D printing and it's happening with 3D printers too. Mm -hmm. Like there's the, it's much easier to get into it now right. because you don't have to know everything about programming and how the Z axis stop and all that. But what you have is that you have a bunch of really ignorant people who don't care about anything, who don't see it as a hobby, but just see it as like a tool. Right. A fun toy. Which I thought it would be until I started using it right. and then every single thing broke. So and, I had to refix and that's, it. That, 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 that like things breaking and you have to having to understand how it works, uh -huh. it makes you understand the basis of it. Yeah. And so you understand the whole of it even better. And so at that point, you're better at problem solving. Mm -hmm. That's not just a, I'm better at using the 3D printer. I'm better at solving problems in general. Yeah. And that makes you a better human being is when things are designed to be technical mm -hmm. and be difficult to use so that you can have power out of them. It makes you a better person mm -hmm. <laughs> in, in general. And Technology then, makes you a better person. <laughs> and like, and with Apple, like the the days where I had started it, wanting to do one simple thing that uh -huh. should have taken five minutes, but took the entire day because the levels of rabbit holes I had to climb through, and I understood it completely. So like, the I talk to people, and and I'll. Like on FaceTime, there's this portrait mode. It's yeah. one button. Mm -hmm. Like there are four buttons on on all four corners of the screen. One of them does turns off portrait mode. And then I I FaceTime people and they have portrait mode on and they're like, how do I turn off portrait mode? I'm like it's one of the four buttons yeah. in it the should, corners. It should be the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> yeah, you click the one that says portrait mode or it looks like a little portrait. <laughs> yeah. Also, okay, I was um this is the last thing and then mm -hmm. I've got I've got a client. I've skedaddle. Got, I've got a uh -huh. skedaddle out of here. Um thank you for having me on the show by the way. You're very welcome. But for being on the show. Um, thank where, you for having me. where was I going with this? Oh yeah, the portrait mode thing. Is that portrait mode was only created back when smartphones couldn't do natural bokeh. Mm -hmm. Back when like you you needed to add it artificially, but now that camera sensors and like phones, like with the newest iPhones, when you take a picture, it has natural background blur mm -hmm. because that's just how cameras work. Uh -huh. And so like, there's a lot of people in Gen Z that will simply say, oh, can you add portrait mode to that? <laughs> they mean, can you make the background blurrier? But they, they don't, they don't know. Turn up the feather a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like when me, when us camera nerds hear uh -huh. the term portrait mode, we know, oh, that's an artificial thing mimicking bokeh, an actual characteristic of uh -huh. lenses that is trying to be mimicked using artificial intelligence and using computers. Mm -hmm. And that's something that phones don't have to mimic anymore. Like you can zoom in, you can punch in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like if you use the 2x camera on your phone that's gonna look miles better than any portrait mode ever could yeah because it's natural <laughs> because it's just what the camera does uh -huh. then you just let cameras do their thing they look beautiful well thank you for being on the show thanks for having me sam uh -huh. good luck charlie <laughs>